What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlook here. So we're going to be talking about Jeepers Creepers in this video here again today, more specifically about a theory regarding Jeepers Creepers 5 and taking concepts or aspects of that cathedral script and fleshing out another opening idea we could potentially see in a potential fifth Jeepers Creepers movie. If again, once Myriad Pictures and Infinity Films settle this lawsuit, if we get what we, well I'll say some of us hope for, not all of us, because I know some of you kind of just wish they would just let it let it die and accept that the first two movies are all that are ever going to be decent but if we do get a fifth movie i want to examine some aspects of that cathedral concept and flesh out an opening idea for a fifth movie with those aspects in mind now we know cathedral would have taken the character of trisha jenner brought her back to the center stage it's 23 years later she would team up with the taggarts to go after the creeper put an end to it because she's been having nightmares about her son suffering the same fate as her brother did 23 years ago and of course this son is also named after her brother so let's consider the fact that you could have an opening sequence that centers on said son so trisha for those of you who have been watching my jeepers creepers videos keep in mind if we would have ever gotten a tv series in the initial season like I've discussed in the past videos, Trisha is someone who has spent her life terrified of the creeper taking her son. She's having nightmares. Her son thinks she's overprotective and they have like a rocky relationship because of this. He being a teenager overhears all of this stuff is well aware of her plans to go out to the Taggart barn and put it into this once and for all. He also has his doubts about this monster because he's never seen it. So in order to prove to himself that she is insane, he tracks down the address to Old Man Taggart's farm and he goes out there to confront this supposed creeper that his mother is terrified will kill him when it when it awakens in the next couple of days or so, depending on how far along we are. Now, in this opening, it'll actually be the very night or the day of I'll just say night because I, I know if it's set at night, that'll be much more spooky. It's the night that the creeper is going to awaken. Derry, let's say he's around 15, 16 years old, 16 year old boy, sneaks out, drives over to the Taggart barn, takes a couple friends with him. They are in the barn looking for the creeper. And of course, they don't have to go looking too much further because they look up, shine a flashlight on it. There it is. Bat out of hell sign hanging above the wall just as the just as the taggarts had left it for all this time for the past 23 years and the taggarts where they are in this instance they're both inside jack jr and jack senior they're inside of their farmhouse sleeping the creeper is for all they know resting every night jack jr has to convince his father that it's okay to go inside and take his eyes off for a couple of hours so that he can get some rest so that's how Derry and his friends are able to go in so easily they actually show up right after the taggarts go inside they go into the barn Friends are hassling Derry. Tells him this this the thing your mother is scared is gonna kill you. You know, cracking jokes at it, poking fun at his dead uncle, stuff like that. Mentioning the other Derry that we know was played by Justin Long. And then ultimately, Derry goes up closer to the carcass and it's empty. There's nothing in there. He sees that it's hollowed out. There's nothing in there. He starts poking at it nothing but dust comes out of it so he's like well, where the hell is it and they're all like well yeah i thought something was supposed to be in here so your mother really is full of shit but then they hear crows from outside of the barn they go rushing over to where these where the noise is coming from again it's pitch black uh you can even throw in a little bit of fog to set the atmosphere and set the mood you have some chilling music playing something to that effect really set the mood they go running out of the barn doors to where the crow sounds are coming from. They see a, a swarm of crows or a flock of crows just swirling in a circle off into the distance in the near near cornfield where the Taggart's barn is at. They're trying to figure out what the hell those crows are up to. Derry has the flashlight shining on these crows. And after maybe a 10 second glance of these crows swirling in place, appearing slowly in those crows is the creeper. And then it clears and there's nothing there but just the creeper. He's returned or it has returned. It's eyeing Derry and its friends and his friends in the face. 
doesn't look like it's lost a beat at all. It's fully rehealed. It has all of its limbs. Its wings are back. Everything. I think that was an aspect of how they're going to explain how he got his wings back in the cathedral script. He would have just shown up or it would have just shown up it appearing in a swarm or whatever you whatever you want to call it a flock of those crows that we know seem to follow the creeper seem to have some sort of association so take it a step further and have the creeper reborn in a swarm of crows so they say is that the is that the creeper and then Derry's like that that must be the creeper then they all try to fight the creeper everyone but Derry anyway his two friends try to fight the creeper they all end up getting killed for their efforts Derry rushes over to his car after he notices that the creeper sees that he's clearly afraid and there must be something about Derry Jr. that the creeper likes because Derry rushes over into his car tries to drive off back home after his friends are killed and the creeper and Derry have a very intense chase scene with Derry driving down the East 9 highway the creepers flying over the car he's not going to go after Derry just yet it's just toying with Derry trying to really get that fear built up to really smell if there's something about Derry that it likes get a good scent get a good whiff off of Derry before it actually strikes later on in the movie so during this opening after Derry and his friends leave the barn after the friends are killed after Derry drives home in fear with the creeper briefly flying over the car just scaring Derry we jump back to the Taggarts who wake up to all that noise outside and, and, and Jack Sr. is like Jack I just heard something I know you didn't pop go back to bed both of them are he ends up convincing Jack Jr. yes yes the fuck I did get your ass up let's go to that barn and make sure the creeper's still in there they go outside the creeper's gone and Jack Sr is just having a fit he's absolutely livid because it's gone the thing that killed his boy is gone and he's just having a fit he's determined once and for all to actually go get that thing and he's like see Minxie was right Jack Minxie was right Jack you can find out over the years Jack Sr. actually did start believing what Minxie was saying but Jack Jr. has always been the one in doubt which kind of lends itself to the line at the end of the second movie are you waiting for something about three more days give or take a day or two if you didn't believe her why are you waiting for it because so you can throw in that line M make it known that he actually did start to believe minxie and that jack jr was the one in doubt but you guys can let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notification you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video